Hello, friends. We're so glad you're joining us today for God Encounters. Really excited today um, for my guest, which is Abby McCracken. Abby is a young prophetic voice that has been hearing God's voice since she was three years old. She has grown up in a prophetic household. Many of you know her father, who's been on many times. Um, and so that's the household she grew up in, Jeff McCracken's home. She's been filled with testimonies of what God is doing and now has her own testimonies of how he's moving radically and powerfully. In the spring of 2020, Abby graduated high school and college semi-utaneously. She's been walking into her own ministry, anointing and calling for years, however. She served most of 2021 as a missionary in Mexico with YWAM, which is Youth with a Mission, and has now come on full-time staff at her father's church, Rainier Assembly of God, as the lead evangelist pastor, missions pastor, and young adults leader. Got a full plate there. Yeah. And she continues to minister to the nations as a guest speaker in the U.S. As Abby has ministered in public schools, private schools, ministry schools, churches and conferences, in the marketplace, in social settings, her accuracy at such a young age has amazed leaders and recipients. She's also a published author of Profit Sharing 2021 and the upcoming Profit Sharing 2022, which is probably out now, I'm guessing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. So Abby has a desire to walk in the fullness of her calling as a prophetic voice to the nations. From a very young age, she has had a desire to travel and minister around the world. She desires to walk out biblical adventures of setting people free from their garbage and past, hallelujah, to speak life and encouragement to who God has designed them to be, not who they have been, hallelujah. She wants to see captives set free and walking in their godly royal destinies. Come on, I'm all about it. And she wants them to walk in hope. Come on, folks, we need hope today. And a new perspective, not only of whose they are, but who God is. Welcome to the show, Abby. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> so good to have you. Well, just give us a little snippet of what it was like growing up in the McCracken home. Yeah, so basically my whole life, like, um, I never thought, like, being prophetic or speaking in tongues was, like, something weird. I thought everybody knew how to do that. So, like, when I was in uh, school, um, I just assumed everybody spoke in tongues. And so when my teacher asked, um, does anybody speak another language? I raised my hand and I started speaking in tongues because I genuinely just thought everybody did that. I thought everybody prophesied, everybody laid hands on the sick and thought they would uh, get healed. And so, um, yeah. Um, so basically just growing up with my parents, they've pushed me to like really step out of the boat and go after all Jesus has for me. And so um, which definitely, I don't know if they really expected that would, um, <laughs> help me be unafraid to go speak to like Muslims and cartel members and all that stuff. But yeah. So you got some crazy stories. So I'm just going to yeah. unleash you and let you just go for it. And also yeah. if there's a God encounter in there, which they probably all have God <laughs> encounters in them. So just go for yeah. it. Yeah. So when I was in Mexico, um, my heart's desire was really to go after evangelism and really be out of my comfort zone like no fear of man just totally demolishing fear of man and so um i would just go up and like start standing in front of people and just preaching the gospel like and i didn't know any spanish or anything like that and so it was so cool to just rely on the holy spirit um and like when i would do evangelism sometimes like if i didn't have a translator with me um, like I really could not pick up Spanish, but then my tongues would come out in Spanish and I'd get these people saved. And I was like, Holy Spirit, yes, let's go. Um, but there was one specific day that has marked my life forever where um, me and a few people on my team, we went out to do evangelism and our team was struggling with sicknesses the whole time. Like, so there's only a few of us out that day. Um, and I really didn't want to be out, to be honest. Like, I wasn't feeling the greatest either. But the Lord is like, Abby, I have something out there for you. And I was like, okay, let's go for it, Jesus. <laughs> and so um, I go out and I see these three men who are like six, five each, um, just 
huge, massive men. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go preach the gospel to them. And so I walk up, um, little me, and I'm like, do you guys speak Spanish? And they're like, yeah, we do. And I was like, okay, cool. And then I'm like, are you guys part of the cartel? And they're like, yeah, how do you know? And I was like, um, I just know. And then I started preaching the gospel to them. And these huge men that are like, have seen the nastiest stuff happen as tears just roll down their face, they're receiving the gospel. Um, and then I baptize them in the Holy Spirit. They start shaking. Two of them get slain out. The other is just say, shaking under the Holy Spirit. They start speaking in tongues, like the whole thing. It was just like, boom, that was it. And so now one of those people is a missionary today. Like, total God encounter changed his life forever. Um, and I then love that it. Same, yeah. That same day, um, I was walking on the beach and, um, in Mexico, everywhere is a party 24 seven, just a party. And that's not really my scene. I don't, I don't do that, but the Lord is like, Abby, I have something for you down there. So I walked down to the beach, um, and, I look at this guy and I'm like, okay, God wants to do some healing today. So I look at this guy, he has like, mm, you could tell he had back problems or something with his hips or something like that. And so I'm like, hey, do you need prayer? And he's like, nope. I was like, okay. So I like walk away, like super embarrassed the whole thing. And the Lord's like, go back. And I'm like, okay, fine, fine, I'll go back. <laughs> and so I finally go back and I like muster up enough courage to talk to him again. I'm like, do you really need healing? And he's like, no, no, I don't. But my friend does. And he points out to the ocean and they have all these like grown men, like carrying this guy in and he's like screaming and like the whole thing like very traumatic and I couldn't see what was happening so I walk up they set him in a chair the bone is sticking out of his knee and I'm like oh my gosh I don't do blood I don't do any of that stuff so I'm like oh ew, no no and so I'm like can I pray for you he's like yeah 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 and so I lay my hand on his knee and it's about this far out of his knee and I go in the name of Jesus be healed and it goes back into his knee and I'm like oh wow. my gosh and he's like oh my gosh and he's like I'm Mormon and I'm like Jesus doesn't care and I gotta lead him to Christ that day like it was Hallelujah. so crazy. a God encounter and then um another crazy testimony um when I was Hold on. sorry you gotta yeah. get this <laughs> stuff on film girl you need somebody running around I know I need a camera, camera. Seriously, I'm going to pray that in for you. Okay. Um, yeah, so another testimony in Mexico was uh, we were doing some uh, Bible distribution one day, and there's just like a lot of like demonic stuff on this specific area we were at. And like, you could feel the heaviness just going into it. Like nobody wanted to be there. Like we're just, uh, it was so gross. And since like, I could see everything that was happening. I'm like, come on guys, let's go. And I was with, um, the people I was with were all Baptists and they were like, eh, like Holy Spirit, like, eh. So it was like, so crazy. So we walk up to this house and they're like, are you guys missionaries? And we're like, yes. And they're like, come in, come in. And so we got to like pray with these people and the grandma, the mom and then her children, they were all demon possessed. And so first I'm praying over the baby, it starts throwing up um, and he has like marks all over his body, like really weird, like just cuts and bruises and all this stuff. And he's a small little guy, like can't walk yet. And then um, I pray over the, the mom and I have a prophetic word, she receives Jesus instantly. And then the grandma starts manifesting like crazy. She runs in the house and I was like, we'll get back to her in a minute. <laughs> and so we filled the mom with the Holy Spirit, the whole thing. She starts speaking in tongues, all this stuff. We go into the house because she tells us that um, she's been seeing like these demons at night. And so we're like, okay, let's deal with that. So we go in and the room she saw it in was the grandma's room and the grandma was sitting there and, um, I like walk in and I was like, okay, we're going after it. So I just start speaking in tongues and I'm like, do you want freedom? Do you want freedom? And she's screaming in Spanish. You're attacking me. Stop. You're attacking me. And I just still start speaking in tongues and we're walking her through some um, deliverance. And then the daughter comes in who's newly saved, starts casting demons out of the mom, just instantly like she just got saved like she doesn't know any of that stuff and I'm like whoa what is happening <laughs> and so that was so cool we got her completely delivered of demons she gets um healed set free all that stuff um and uh receives Jesus as her lord and savior and I see her body and there's all these marks all over her body just like the little baby and I'm like what what are these marks and she said my sister's a witch doctor and has a um 
like one of those little body things of her and starts stabbing it. And so she'll wake up with all these marks and she does the same thing with the baby. And so I was like, I believe God can heal you right now. And she's like, okay, you can pray. And so I'm like, in the name of Jesus, be completely healed. And I watch as the scars and the bruises completely fade off of her body. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you didn't have to break a curse. You yeah. just prayed healing and it happened. Yeah. yeah, totally. That's amazing. Well, and you brought up another question for me. Sorry, this is uh, no, no me going. Yeah. Um, I didn't know. So since the grandma wasn't quite cooperating, because I didn't think you can cast demons out of a home if unless the people are wanting because, you know, yeah. they want it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we I think it was mostly just the grandma that had like the demons. And so um, obviously, like she gave it permission to walk around their house and like do whatever. And so when the daughter got saved, she um, told us that the that it was in the grandma's room. And so we go in there and the grandma was there. And so we just dealt with it all at once. And then it was just absolutely free. And wow. so we did follow up afterwards. And after that moment of just deliverance in that household, everything was set free. And Great. so- yeah. Wow. Well, praise God. You're you're a go getter girl. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. one of these. Well, let's think about this. Let's think yeah. this. Through. You know, I'm playing yeah. the safety route a lot of times, but you just go for it. That's great. Yeah. You're, you're yeah. a ghost buster. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So, Sweet. but when I got called home from the Lord, um, which honestly the Lord's told me I would be working from home for like a long time, but I've always tried to run from that because. <laughs> Um, I've always wanted to be in the nations and I know I'm called to the nations, but I'm called to both. And so when the Lord called me home, I was kind of discouraged. Um, and so I was like, Lord, you have to give me a dream on why I'm here. And so he ended up giving me a dream that night that I got back of um, me taking a team to Amsterdam. And my heart is to see sex trafficking ended in my generation, not be like the Israelites who waited um, to slay giants in the land to get in the promised land. Like we're going to slay the giants in this land right Come now, on. right here, that we don't have to pass it down to our children's children, that we just take care of it right now. Yeah. And so um, wow. I ended up building a team and all that. But my desire with this team wasn't just that we would go to the nations, that we would transform our nation, that mm -hmm. like evangelism is a lifestyle. It's not an event that happens. Um, so with taking out my team, who is just people from like the church, like whether they're newly saved or they've been saved for 30 years, like um, it definitely varies. Um, but my goal with them was to just let them loose in our city and our nation to just go after it, whether it's in the workplace and their family, whatever it may be, but like our nation needs to be saved as much as every other nation. And so um, through teaching them evangelism and all that stuff, we've seen some crazy stuff happen where I get a daily text from one of them on the team that they either at their workplace or at the grocery store, they got somebody saved, healed, delivered, whatever it may be, just a love encounter with the Lord. And so, um, yeah, it's been really, really crazy. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Oh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> you yeah. know, and, and I want to encourage you because I hear you. You know, I'm I'm one of these goal oriented girls and I'm a I gotta go for it, you know, you know, and you don't want to be stuck and confined to yeah. a box. Totally. You want to be going and doing, you know. Yeah. But in the process, mm. God's refining things. Not that you're not perfect. Yeah. I'm sure you are. <laughs> But God's still refining yeah. things in us, you know what I mean? And it and it doesn't always feel good, but there's a he always has a purpose behind everything. And you're also maturing in how to work with different people. Yeah, totally. Totally. You know what I mean? So yeah. I just bless you in that because you know, you could, you know, you'll you'll be used powerfully outside, but yeah. you're gonna be powerfully inside the church as yeah. well. Because you're you're empowering and changing lives and and they're springboarding off of what you release. So yeah, I just want to encourage you on that. Yeah. And I'm definitely seeing that like um, our first time when we did evangelism, um, a few on the team were like, yeah, I can't do that. That is not for me. I can't talk to people. And then afterwards, the testimonies after they're like, I know you like pushed me to do it. And you're like, okay, you go preach the gospel to that person. And they're like, it shook me out of my comfort zone, but Jesus doesn't stay in our comfort zone. He pushes us out of our comfort zone. And so 
um just seeing like the total transformation now that like they're the ones that are so confident um that are doing it on the daily basis where it's just like you got to push them a little bit and then they're just launching into their destiny and callings i i was one of those and i still sort of am you know i'm not one like my friend sunny who can just go up to anybody and you know yeah. i can smile at anybody and say hi to yeah. anybody but there is something about you know it's a little uncomfortable for me, you know, but I can go on TV, I can talk, blah, 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 yeah, totally. but that face to face thing, um, you know, sometimes, I mean, it just depends, it really depends, but I'm not one to go out and do, you know, but when I've done it, yeah. it's great joy. Oh my gosh, you're like, wow, it wasn't as scary as I thought. I mean, what's the worst thing? Somebody can say no. Exactly. exactly. They'll say, no, I don't want it. And then if you're like Abby and God says, <laughs> go back again, <laughs> <laughs> and they yeah, changed their totally mind. So <laughs> I love yeah, it. Yeah. 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 Um, I really believe the Lord put this on my heart this morning about Isaiah um 56, 7, about um a house of prayer for all nations. Mm. And so I just believe like people on this, um, whether they're intercessors, whether whatever they are in the fivefold or um in the church or whatever they're doing, I just feel like the Lord is calling us to a greater prayer movement. Um, like specifically the people on this call today that um the Lord's gonna be awakening you in the night with desires that are on your heart but also on the father's heart and there's just something that's going to be released we're going to be a people that get lost on the backside of hills to just fall in love with jesus just like david he fell in love and he yes. heard the lord in the secret place and so things were unlocked and i believe like keys are going to be released to people um who are watching this today whatever like your desire may be maybe it's sex trafficking maybe it's healing the sick maybe it's getting out of bed because you've been struggling with depression like whatever it may be the lord's giving you keys today um so just receive them so yeah wow. <laughs> yes lord we just thank you for keys being released today in jesus yeah. name so as a prophetic act i'm all about prophetic acts yeah. i want you to reach up right now and grab that key and yeah. some of you it's going to be more than one key yeah hallelujah yeah. Grab those keys that God is giving you because you're the one that's going to use them to unlock others and unlock because keys are meant to unlock things in the spirit. Amen. Yeah, that's so good. Give you access to things. So I re we receive those keys today, Lord, whatever they are and however you want to use yeah. us in Jesus name. Lord, I pray right now. Uh, you're inspiring me break us out of our comfort yeah. zones lord yeah. break us out of that give us such a boldness god stir mm -hmm. that up today and everybody listening as abby continues sharing our stories stir up a boldness within us god that it's not about us it's how you want to reach that person in front of us god so i just thank you god that you would just remove any blinders that we've had from religion or anything else that is trying to keep us confined to a box Lord, open us up today. Wow. Open us up. <laughs> Unlock yeah. us today, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so with taking some people out on my team, um, I've seen some crazy stuff happen. And just when you carry authority, um, and keys release authority. And so um people will literally notice it on you. And I want to just share some testimonies about that. That wherever you go, like people are going to notice Jesus in you. And so it's, what are you going to do with it? Go so, ahead. um, when I went out a few weeks ago, I think it was about a week ago with one of my friends, um, to do evangelism with another church that's doing evangelism here, because we believe in unity. It's not about, um, just different churches and getting churches full. It's about Amen. getting the bride full. So, um, we went out and we had really no expectation besides Jesus. And so uh, we did door to door for the first part of the day. And I'm not kidding you when I say, we started knocking on doors. And before we would even get to doors, we would hear people screaming, get away from us, get away from us, you're hurting us. And we're like, shut up, I, 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 I. like, we're just like going after it. But it was so crazy because 
um, every place has like darkness, but darkness will prevail when there's an absence of light. And so we have to be the light when you're in a dark area or like you're feeling that oppression of the land and all that stuff. Like you have to go in with um, the fight. We're made to be giant slayers. So um, <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, it was really hard in that like moment where we're knocking on doors, people are rejecting us. Um, just all the nastiness people are um, saying to us and just that this gospel isn't worth it and all that stuff. And mm. honestly, like you have to break the back of rejection because Jesus was the most rejected person. Um, and so I teach my team and anybody I'm doing evangelism with that we need to celebrate rejection because when you <laughs> celebrate getting rejected, then the enemy has no hold on that because come on literally released it and you're like yes jesus was rejected i'm so glad i'm rejected yes lord um so that later that day after this craziness of getting rejected like non-stop and just um like we encountered like six witches that day just the whole thing you know they were not happy that we were out evangelizing evangelizing that day and so we go into a store we're walking around praying for people. And so I get, um, I mostly work off a uh, prophetic evangelism. So I'll get a word for somebody and then go up and talk to them. Um, and so I had this word for this girl. I go up, um, I give it to her. She's like, what the heck? Like, she was just in the shampoo aisle. She's like, oh my <laughs> gosh. Like, she's trying not to cry. You could tell the whole thing. And then my friend starts preaching the gospel. She receives the gospel. I get a word of knowledge about back pain. And I'm like, do you have back pain? She's like, what the heck? Yeah, I do. And so I'm like, in the name of Jesus, be healed. It completely healed. And she like touches her toes, which she couldn't do the whole thing. Wow. Um, receives the gospel. We baptize her in the Holy Spirit. She gets instantly plugged into a church, like instantly. Not our church, but she got plugged into a church. And what was so crazy is she told us, um, her grandma literally said, um, her grandma's been a Christian her whole life. And her grandma said that two angels are going to come visit you this week and you're going to receive the gospel. <laughs> and I'm not an angel, but I am a messenger. So um, <laughs> you travel with them, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so that was really crazy. That same day, um, the girl I was working with, my friend, she was uh, going around the store praying for people. And she also does the same as me. We do prophetic evangelism. She goes up, gives this lady a prophetic word. The lady's sobbing. Um, and then she is telling her that like she's a Christian, but like she's not really believing in the whole thing because she has this um, uncurable skin disease that mm. she's been praying for thousands of times. All of her friends are getting healed of small things, but she's not getting healed of this big thing. And um, my friend just lays hands on her and says, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And she gets her number and all that. And there was no evidence of um, healing that moment. She texts her the next day and says, I went to the doctors. I'm completely healed. Woo! And so that's the God we serve. It's just yes. based off of our obedience. When we go, things happen. When we sit at home and yeah. expect our calling and all that stuff to happen, nothing happens because Come we're not on. being active with it. In the Bible, it says the harvest is ready, but the workers are few. He doesn't say the servants, the messengers or anything like that. It's workers because there's something that we have to deposit in. We have to work for something. And so that's, Ouch. Maybe, yeah, it may be breaking out of your comfort zone. It may be um, dealing with fear of man and fear of rejection because those are real things that keep you bound up, but it's just severing those things and going after it. And then that's when the Lord shows up every time. Wow. <laughs> this is a good pain today yes. <laughs> circumcision of the heart going on here um wow yeah. i think you should pray that over us right now abby pray yeah. that over us um just release that over us okay yeah god we just break off anything that's hindering people from going out after all you have for them Jesus all the promises that um, have been prophesied over them that you've spoken to them that they wouldn't be just dormant anymore that you would um, release those right now in the name of Jesus that people would go after the harvest that they wouldn't be um, held by shackles of shame they wouldn't be held by fear of man anymore yeah fear of men leaving tonight right now in the name of Jesus we just break off fear 
spirit of man. Um, mm-hmm. We break off fear of men right now in the name of Jesus. Rejection has no place here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we just release total freedom and we just break the back of unbelief right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yeah, you are the God of the impossible. So we just release that today that you would do impossible things to the people who are watching this, who the people, yeah, that there would be a domino effect happening today that um, these messengers would be sent out and then the harvest would go after it, Jesus. We just thank you for a new zeal for the people watching this, that they would be empowered to go after, that they wouldn't settle with their comfort zone, that they would break the boxes that they've put you in, Jesus. Yeah, we just bless them and we just bless their feet for the places they're going to go. Yeah. Wow. Amen. That's so good. <laughs> yeah. Wow. 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 <laughs> yeah. I just have a word of knowledge. Somebody has pain in their right knee right now. Um, and the Lord's setting you free right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I just um feel back pain like in the middle of your back around your spine. Um, yeah, I just declare full healing right now in the name of Jesus over this knee and over this back. Yeah, full mobility right now. Yeah. Yeah, the Lord says for the person with the knee issue that you're going to dance in front of the Lord and it's a sign of your freedom. Yeah, just like David danced, that you will become even more indignified than this. So I just declare <laughs> that over you. Yeah, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Mm, it's so good. Thank you, Lord. Let us know if that's you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, another thing the Lord's been really putting on my heart to talk about this morning is um, that we want to be lovers. We don't want to be leaders. It's um, I know I'm sharing a lot about like the things I've done and um, all that stuff, but to be honest, like the place it came from is intimacy with the father. If you're not going to have intimacy with the father, this isn't going to happen. When um, intimacy doesn't exist, burnt out happens. And so um, really getting in the word is such a powerful thing. Like uh, I tell people this all the time, like if you're unwilling to read the Bible, the truth can never set you free, nor can you set other people free if you're not in the word. And so that's like <laughs> number one. Number one is that. And we're yes. going to the Father. And another thing that I wanted to share on was um, I've been going after this. Um, it's not a movement or anything like that. It's just I want to know Holy Spirit. Holy is his first name. And I want to know him on an intimate basis where I can look at him and I'm like, hi there, Holy, like, because that's who he is. And then the spirit always follows. And so when you are a laid down lover, you don't have to be a leader and it doesn't sacrifice your gifting, your calling, but it will empower your gifting and calling when you're a lover of Jesus, that Mm -hmm. something shifts when, um, you start reading the word when you start praying for people because you've seen the Lord with his eyes like fire, his hair like wool, and it can shift a generation. Like truly, all the things that have bound our nation, other nations, um, intimacy is the answer for all of it. Because in intimacy, the Lord's going to tell you the strongholds, the um, things that you're dealing with, um, all the fears and all that stuff. And I don't know if you guys know a lot about Sozo and all that inner healing, but I literally know people that they start getting into the word and the Lord starts breaking um, in with Sozo on them, dealing with past traumas. They get completely set free and then they are going and setting other people free. Come on. There's such a power to intimacy. And sometimes as Christians, we think intimacy is just like, eh, it's okay. We'll get to it. We'll read our Bible um, once a week and we're fine. No, it's a daily bread for a reason because we were made to cut off the giant's head and eat giants for our bread. Like Mm -hmm. that's literally what we're made for. And so when like people say they don't hear the Lord's voice anymore, well, what are you doing to hear it? Nothing. If you're not reading the Bible, that's number one. Well, Also, what's the last thing the Lord asked you to do that you didn't do? A lot of times disobedience will shut that off as well. Yeah. Yeah. So get in the word. Um, Start asking the Lord, like as simple as it may be, you can ask the Lord, what should I even wear today? What are you going to do with me today? Lord, how are you? Like ask the Lord simple questions because it's a relationship. I don't want to have a relationship with somebody that (laughs) is one-sided. Jesus doesn't want the same thing. So (laughs) Um, just going after intimacy will change your life forever. Like those sicknesses, all that stuff is it's just going to 
instantly vanish. I feel like the Lord says like, there's some people that are waiting for your victory today. Um, just step into the word and it's going to be unleashed. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. That's so good. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we could just get into the prophetic right now. I'm just I'm go for it. Go yeah. for it. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Father. Mm. Yeah, I just feel like there's somebody on this. Um and I don't know if your name's Mary or if you have an a Mary um like anointing on you or whatnot. Um but I just feel like the Lord is saying that you're coming into a season of Jubilee where it's been this pressing and like, it's been a really hard season. It's been a really hard three seasons. Actually, the last three seasons of your life have been really hard, but you've learned some stuff about the father's character. But I just feel like the Lord is saying this is um, the new season you're stepping into is the season of Jubilee where all the, the pain and all the suffering and all the character building and all that stuff, um, it's all going to just be so overjoyed in this season because you're in the year of jubilee there's no um pressure there's no anything and honestly like you felt like the lord was like not there at times you felt like he was just some far off guy that he said he had good plans for you and all that but he, he's been so far off and you've just felt mm -hmm. that and the lord is saying i haven't been far off i've been right next to you the whole time the promises still stand and i haven't forgotten that's going to be your word in this season is i haven't forgotten i haven't forgotten and so i just released that that the year of jubilee would come and it brings um great tidings yeah there's a new gladness there's a new joy that's released in this season and that um yeah, you wouldn't be a Martha, but you were made to be a Mary, that you don't get caught up with um, the task, oh. but you just get caught up with Jesus. Yeah. Wow. Whew, I got Holy Spirit goosebumps all over me yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Yeah. I just, um, I don't know if there's somebody on here named Sarah. Um, I just feel like the Lord is saying you're pregnant with a ministry and it's about to be released. One, two, three, it's about to be released. <laughs> yeah. That you're not going to wait and it's just going to come. Like you haven't even felt the birth pains or anything like that, wow. but it's just, it's supernaturally just going to come out. Yeah. And you know exactly what it is because the Lord told you when you were four years old, what your, um, what your goal, what your design, your plan and purpose was going to be. And it's this ministry. So yeah, I just released the ministry. Yeah. Any weapon of the enemy shall not prosper against this total freedom over this ministry. Yeah. And we just, um, yeah, we just put the armor of God on you right now in the name of Jesus that you can stand. Yeah, you can stand in all the Lord has for you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Thank you, Lord. Um, Mary Marindish is watching, and when you were talking about Mary, she said, I received this. She was watching yeah. for that. Um, I don't see a Sarah right now, but I don't always see the names on here, but yeah. a lot of people will be watching this later on. So, Sarah, get ready. You're giving birth yeah, to something ready, that God... Sarah has in your destiny yeah. <laughs> exciting yeah um yeah i just feel this and you talked about it earlier um i know i shared a lot about like getting people saved and baptizing them in the holy spirit and these crazy testimonies but these are for you too as long as you're in the kingdom they're for you too and mm -hmm. so i just want to um yeah, give the opportunity. If you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or if you want to rededicate yourself to Jesus today, yeah, would you just um, say this um, whenever you're watching this? Yeah, would you, Lord, would you just come into my life and be the Savior of my life? We love your Lordship, Father. We love who you are. Would you forgive us of all of our sins, Father, and just receive us as your son or your daughter? We thank you for the cross, Father, and we just receive your authority today. Yeah, we receive whatever you have for us, Jesus, mm -hmm. that we would no longer be in the kingdom of darkness, but we would be a lamp in the kingdom of light, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And would you just baptize them in the Holy Spirit, Father? <laughs> we just release a new fire on the altar to burn. Yes. Yeah. 
yeah, would you burn up every lesser lover right now in the name of Jesus <laughs> that doesn't amount to you, Father? And would you infill them with the Holy Spirit, a new baptized um, Holy Spirit, a new baptism of your grace and of your goodness, Father, that, yeah, they would see you with your eyes like fire, your hair like wool, that they would just get wrapped up in your goodness, that they would have a Acts story, Father, that you would take them to the upper room and that you would shift something. Yeah, and we would just declare their belly would just be full right now. Their belly would be full, that there would literally be a fire coming out of their mouth right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Father. Yeah, um, I also just feel like there's um, a specific guy on here. I don't know your name, um, but you've been praying for about two years. Um to raise people from the dead. And I just feel like the Lord is saying yes and amen, yes and amen, um, that you're gonna be driving by or walking by and see an accident happen. And you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, is somebody dead? You're gonna be looking out for it because you're gonna be so excited to pray for people. And it's not just for raising the dead, but it's raising the spiritual dead too. And so, yeah, I just feel like the Lord is saying, today is your day of commissioning, that you're gonna go after it. Hallelujah. Um, I don't know if he's still on here, um, but Sharez, he's an evangelist um, in Pakistan, and he's been doing tons of, so I was just looking to see if he's still on here because he would receive that word in our army. Yeah. Uh, Savisco also said, um, Savizio, sorry, if I'm not saying your name right, he says he receives it too in Jesus' name. So Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, Father. Hey, it's for all of us. You know what? We're all yeah, called honestly, to do the works of Jesus. So, yeah. you know, grab it. If she doesn't say your name, it's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's getting, she's listening to the Lord prophetically. If there's something you're going, hey, I want that, grab it. Just mm -hmm. like the keys that were coming down earlier. <laughs> yeah. It's yours. It's free. It's Jesus paid the yeah. price. It's yours. Just walk in it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, I just feel like somebody on here um, has a heart for Germany. I don't know if you're German or if you just have a heart for Germany. Um, but the Lord said there's a revival that's going to be released when you step on that land, that you're going to have a strike the ground ministry. That's the name of um, my missions team. And the only reason I named it that is because wherever we go, we're going to strike the ground for revival because there's wells, there's deep wells, wherever you go for revival, it's just the striking of the ground. And so I just feel like you carry this strike the ground ministry that you're just going to strike the ground and there's going to be a well, um, there's a long awaited well that's going to be released and I just feel like people who are intercessors on here you need to pray over Germany too like there's something that's going to be released in Germany yeah wow. yeah there's revival that's waiting to be released in Europe and so yeah there's something mm -hmm. happening there's something <laughs> definitely happening and I just see like um the map like a uh, Europe up here and like America over here and when one starts on fire whether it's here or there the mm -hmm. other is gonna ignite praise God yeah thank you Jesus thank you Lord oh Marshall's watching from Scotland sweet yeah hallelujah yes Lord we thank you for what you're doing in Europe hallelujah we just speak revival in every nation Lord you are returning yeah. soon and God, you're stirring up the nation. So we thank you that revival um, starters are everywhere. And like you said, striking the ground when we arrive, Lord God, we just thank you that we are yeah. your vessels wherever yeah. we are in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Yeah. Um, Marshall, I have a word for you. Um, so I've done a lot of research on like Evan Roberts for the Welsh revival and all that stuff. And I just feel like the Lord is saying that you're going to pick up his mantle, not the bad stuff about like um, the Jezebel and like the oppression and all that, but you're going to pick up the mantle to see Europe in the fullness. And you have authority because you were, you're Scottish, like I'm Scottish. So you have authority <laughs> in this, um, this area. And I just feel like you have this, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen Braveheart before, but, um, 
when they like let out that cry when they're going into war. Um, I just feel like you carry that, that you are a warrior in the secret place and you're a warrior in front of everyone and you're leading um, a like a band of brothers, like this mighty band behind you and you're just gonna go after it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that you have the anointing of somebody to just um, tear down giants and strongholds. And I just see the Lord like awakening your eyes if he hasn't already to um, the supernatural and greater levels. Um, and you're gonna see like principalities literally fall. I see you like, um, like driving by like um, this specific building um, and you know, like there's a lot of like junk happening there. And I see you like literally like driving by it like every single day and you begin to pray over it. And I see um, in the next six months, there's gonna be, um, you're gonna see the stronghold standing on top of this building and it's just gonna fall. So <laughs> yeah. Jesus. <laughs> he's in tears he's receiving everything you're saying <laughs> good good Woo. hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus yes jesus stir it up lord stir it up thank you jesus hallelujah yeah i just see um like a grandma on here who's about to receive um, like a grandchild. Um, And I just see this grandma being a total um, intercessor for this this child because this child carries a Billy Graham anointing on them. Um, Mm. They're a total evangelist through and through and it's because of the grandma's prayers. Um, And so grandma, your your prayers aren't being unanswered they're just happening so I just release you to keep praying crazy things over this child because crazy things are about to about to come and it's going to be from a young age just like how um I started hearing God's voice audibly when I was three years old this little child is going to start seeing things dreaming things hearing things like praying for people at such a young age and it's because of your influence on empowering this child to walk into these things yeah you know, I'm a grandma and there's a lot, there's a few grandmas on here watching right now. And the Lord showed me one of my granddaughters, a mantle on her at a young age. She's not walking in it yet. And I remind her all the time yeah. who she is. And I will not stop praying until she walks it out because I know yes. the powerful anointing on her. Yeah. So amen, grandmas, keep praying for those grandkids, yeah. Jesus yeah. <laughs> totally and amazing. children, you know. Mm. There are, some, if you feel led to pray for healing too, there's some that need healing from cancer, uh, COVID, um, whatever you. Yeah, let's just go after that. Yeah. Yeah. Can we just um, break off any cancer right now in the name of Jesus? Yeah, cancer will not bind these people any longer. Yeah, we just send it to the pit of hell where it belongs to never return again. Amen. Yeah, total freedom from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. Cancer be gone right now in the name of Jesus. We just plead the blood of Jesus over them. Total freedom, total freedom that they would go to the doctors and the doctors would be amazed. And that it would be an opportunity to, to share about Jesus, Come about on. the healer. <laughs> yeah. And we just, um, we curse COVID-19 to the root right now in the name of yes. Jesus. Yes. That, um, yeah, no demonic um, disease plague would hinder anybody any longer. We just send Amen. it to the pit of hell. Amen. Yeah, and we just declare... Um, all the symptoms that have happened to these people to be awakened right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yeah, no residue left. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We just break it off right now. Jesus Total name. Freedom from the top of their heads to the bottom of their yes. heads right now. And we curse COVID uh, 2020, COVID yes. 21, mm-hmm. 22, and any other one that tries to come along too in yes. Jesus mighty name. No yeah. more in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God, that all yeah. residue is leaving. Yes. Smell, taste, yeah. come back fully because yeah. that's demonic. God gave us five yeah. senses and yeah. then some in the spirit. So we need those senses working and heightened in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. 
Mm. Yes, Father. Yeah, I just feel like there's somebody from Pakistan like watching or will be watching on here. And um, you've been seeing things in the night. Um, you've been seeing angels. And at times it has scared you, but the Lord says it's a good thing. It's my messenger is coming. And so um, I just break off any fear right now in the name of Jesus. And the Lord says there's big plans for you. There's big plans for you. All the questions and all those things, the Lord is going to answer. There's total freedom. There's freedom for your children. Yeah. Total freedom over you and your past. Mm. Yeah. You. Total freedom. Yeah. I just keep hearing the Lord say freedom, 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 freedom reigns. It reigns over your household. It reigns over your life. Hallelujah. Yeah. That you would be a vessel of freedom. Hallelujah. Who doesn't want that? I'll take more yeah. angelic visitations at night. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, um, I just also feel like there's somebody um, on here that has been dreaming crazy dreams. And they, at times, they think they're just crazy because they're such crazy dreams. Um and like doing these crazy things. They know like some dreams are prophetic, but like a lot of them just have been so crazy that they're like, what the heck? But they still remember them. And so I just feel like the Lord is saying that um, uh, you have a Daniel anointing on you for dreams and to interpret dreams. And so the Lord's been giving you these crazy dreams and you're gonna go through this process with the Lord and it's gonna be a fun process. It's not gonna be a weighty process or anything like that, but this process with the Lord to um, find out what these dreams mean to interpret them and if they're for you or if they're for somebody else or whatnot but it's going to be this fun process and um it's going to be like a puzzle personally I hate puzzles but um <laughs> the Lord's giving you the gift to love like figuring things out and putting the pieces together and you're going to do these with these um these dreams and the dreams are going to keep coming yes father Amen. Um, <clears throat> we've got Africa watching, Zambia, uh, Pakistan. Evangelist Amir Javed, if I said it right, I apologize. Okay. For <laughs> kindly uh, says, kindly remember us in your prayers. Um, his vision is to save the generation from adultery, uh, addiction, forced marriages, and teach them physically and spiritually and feed them as well. So see if you get anything for Evangelist yeah. Amir. Yeah, where is he from again? Sorry. He's in Pakistan. Pakistan. Oh, wow. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I just feel like the Lord is saying over him um, that he is going to be a carrier of holiness and not what, um, like in the past, people have teached holiness that it's. Um, it's all these things you have to do, all these works you have to do. And it's not that it's an encounter with the father that is an inward job that um, shows off externally. And so I just feel like you're going to be a vessel of holiness to bring to a generation. And I don't know if you're married or if your wife's on the way, but she's also going to be a vessel of holiness that um, people are going to look at you. And like, I feel like people from Gen Z, you're calling them to be a generation that is zealous after the Lord, because that is what Gen Z is called to be is a zealous generation and you have um you have this holiness that just attracts people and so you're not gonna have to um at times you feel like uh it's all about doing 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 and it's so overwhelming and the lord says it doesn't have to be overwhelming anymore you're like a magnet they're just gonna flock to you there's no work that you have to really put in um to go after mm -hmm. them they're gonna come to you and i just feel like the lord says discipleship is the key discipleship opening up your home or your church or whatever and just bring these people yes. into fellowship and build family because family is the key to revival Come on. family is the key to revival and so when you open up the door for family whether they're prodigals or um their moms and dads it doesn't matter about ages if when you're called to be a father of many nations it doesn't matter about your age and so you're going to start discipling people older than you younger than you because you carry this crazy wisdom and this crazy holiness about you that is just going to unleash 
a generation. And so all the strongholds and all the things that um, people are dealing with, they're just going to have to fall. There's only one king. And so he's going to sit on the throne. There's only one. And so you're going to partner with heaven to just unleash because you're going to make disciples that are going to make disciples. You're going to make fishers of men constantly. Yes. Yeah. Come on, folks, you carry the power of the living Christ within you. You carry that everywhere you go. We forget that sometimes. One time I was walking, the Lord showed me glory splattering out of my feet with every yeah, step I took, so okay? You release him in many different ways. We all have different callings, different anointings, but you're releasing the kingdom of God from within you out, amen? Yeah. So remember that. Remember, you are empowered. You have so much power within you. You've got the kingdom of God within you, and it wants to come out everywhere you go. So just yeah. sometimes we just have to remember those things. You know, we're yeah. on the earth, right? <laughs> but we have to remember those things. So, mm -hmm. woo, hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I just kept hearing the, the name Kevin. Um, uh, and I just feel like the Lord says that there's doors that you're about to open and they're only God doors that there's um specific like there's been like I don't know if it's a job or something but there's been these doors that have been um coming open and you're like oh my gosh should I choose those should I not choose those and the Lord says hold off there's going to be a door that's a God-sized door that um he can only open and that's a door you're supposed to go through and you're going to know you're going to absolutely know that it's the Lord and I just feel like the Lord says you also carry the um, the uh, mantle, anointing, um, whatever you want to call it, um, to open up ancient doors. You carry this crazy to just open up the ancient doors. And I believe there's um, something in Psalms about that. So I recommend you getting into Psalms and start reading about the ancient doors because there's something that needs to be open. And a lot of ancient doors are like, uh, have a lot of like a Celtic stuff and like all that stuff. And so you're made to bind the, um, the paganism and all that stuff and just release the Lord. Yeah. Release the Lord. I think you're prophesying over my husband right now. Really? His name is Kevin and he, we can be in a store. Okay. And I don't notice it. And instantly, if someone's got a pentagram, he's like, do you see that? I, <laughs> I wasn't looking. No. I think, oh okay, gosh. that's cool. I Thank didn't even you. know your husband was named Kevin, so. Yes, I know. That's oh. cool. <laughs> I received that for him. Father. Yeah. He's stepping into more stuff than he has before. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yeah, I just keep hearing New Zealand. New Zealand. That there's going to be New Zeal in your land. New Zealand um that the lord has crazy things for you um yeah i don't even really know what the lord is saying about new zealand but the lord has something really crazy for you wow yeah thank you father yeah i don't know if it's, it's new zealand as a whole or if you're a kiwi or what whatnot but there's something with you and like your birthright i just keep hearing like New Zealand, New Zealand, your land, a birthright. And so, yeah, I just release that. Whatever that is, Lord, they know. So, yeah, would you come in? Yeah. Yeah, and we just break the back of, like, any shame or condemnation or anything like that. And we just say, have your way, Father. Have your way, Father. You haven't forgot the promises. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, Father. Mm. Mm. Um, this is a weird one. Uh, <laughs> so I just keep seeing this picture of a boat and like this man working like on a boat, like it's not like a tiny boat, but it's not a big boat or anything like that. But um, 
I just see you like working on this boat and like uh, you like cleaning it and all that stuff. And um, the Lord says there's an adventure that's waiting. Like you may be just like a casual like person that likes to go fishing or whatnot. But the Lord said there's an adventure that's awaiting because you were made to make fishers of men. And like everything about you is like um, like a, a manly man, like an adventure guy, um, like hunting, fishing, the whole thing, you know. Um but the Lord says the nations are your inheritance too. And that mm-hmm. there's um there's something about you being like a father, if you're a physical father or a spiritual father to um men and women, um, you're releasing like, and I just see like young people like my age, like 20s, even 40s, um, around that age, like from their 20s to their 40s, like people like coming up to you and they just want the father's blessing because Mm -hmm. people are longing for a father and you carry um, the father's heart so well because you learned how to be a son because to be a good father, you have to learn how to be a good son first. So good. That's so good. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Do you hear anything for Chris Board? Yeah, let's let me just pray really fast. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, Chris, I just feel like the Lord is saying that um, he's changing um, the coat and coats can mean like a mantle. Um, But also like, I just feel like there's been like a heaviness on you for the last like three months or so um, that there's just been this heaviness and like, and it's not like um, anything, like it's not something that you've opened up, not a spiritual like door you've opened up or anything like that. You're just feeling the, this um, heaviness of like the land and all that stuff. And so I just break off the Python, the Python spirit off of you. Um, yeah. That any witchcraft that's come against you, I just break it right now in the name of Jesus yeah and I just feel like the Lord is saying that you have the David anointing to just get lost in intimacy but you also um become even more undignified than this that there's uh um an undignified spirit about you that you're willing to just go for it um because dignity will protect you from the presence dignity will protect you so Mm. to be undignified you were saying Lord have your way with me and so um in the Bible, when it talks about uh, David being being even more indignified than this, like, um, and dancing, and, like, he danced so crazy that he lost um, his clothes, and his wife was so offended and so just upset about this that she became barren, and so when you become undignified, um, it literally unleashes um, the, the opportunity to bear fruit, but then with the Lord, fruit always multiplies, And so um, I just feel like the Lord is saying there's increase coming for you, Chris. There's so much increase. There's so much that um, like you've even dreamed of these things, like from a young age, I feel like 16 years old or so that you've dreamed about these things um, and the Lord's he's releasing them. And you're slowly but surely stepping into it. Like everything you're doing, it's it's taking steps there. So I just, um, I bless your feet. I anoint your feet and I just break off any shackles on your feet so you can run after the fullness that the Lord has for you. Come on, come on, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He receives that, by the way. Good. Woo, hallelujah. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm getting my socks blast, blast off. <laughs> Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. I just release a freshness over everybody today watching. Lord, I there's a weariness that comes on you when you've been in ministry for a while. And, totally. and you know, you're going through, you feel like you're trudging through thick mud at times, you know. But I just release a freshness and a fresh joy of the Lord over everybody on this right now. Well, Lord, I just thank you for the joy of the Lord is our strength. It picks us up by the bootstraps and says, come on, you can do it. 
you know, just release that stuff. I just thank yeah, you, Lord, that you're just cleansing people today of all the stuff, the daily stuff that we yeah. just kind of walk through and go through and, and gets rubbed on us at times when we're, you know, we live in a world that's fallen, but you know yeah. what? We carry that kingdom of God and the glory of God. So I just yeah. release that over you today mm -hmm. in Jesus' mighty name. Um, Unfortunately, we're running out of time. Yeah. I bless you, Abby. This has been so fun. Yeah. We'll have yeah. to have you on again. Yeah. And, um, you know, she's amazing. You know, I just, I love you and what you're doing. I just, I bless you in Jesus' name. I bless your family. I love your father. I haven't met your mother personally, but I love her too. So I just bless everything that you're doing, Lord. And I just thank you for every open door for Abby, God. Yes. Every open door that she's to walk through, Lord God. She's mm -hmm. such an inspiration to the body of Christ. So friends, we love you. Um, yes. Stay tuned. Check out my, my YouTube channel if you haven't yet. God Encounters LLC with Cheryl Thomas. You can catch lots of these shows. And until the next time, friends, stay blessed.